Hello everyone. So today we are again discussing a very important topic for the NEET exams that is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. A very important topic from the periodontal uh, department and uh, we'll discuss with the introduction of the also called as ANUG with different names. I will begin with the introduction part. So ANUG or acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis is a microbial disease. So it is a microbial disease in the host where the Im immunosuppression has occurred in context of the host where immune response is not proper which is characterized by death. So this is a threat condition where death can also occur and gingival sloughing is seen. So acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis also called as Vincent's infection because in 1986 Vincent called it a disease due to spirochetes microbial infection. It is also known as Vincent's stomatitis also known as trench mouth. Now the term trench mouth has come because of its prevalence in the soldiers working in the trench in the World War I. So it is also known as trench mouth. This was very common in the soldiers during World War I. It is also known as fetid stomatitis and also known as putrid stomatitis. So these are different names which one has to remember for ANUG also known as acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. So we will begin with the clinical features of ANUG. What are the appearance, where do you find it, what you have to look out for, how is the widespread, everything. So ANUG the main characteristic is the punched out crater like depression. This is a very important term to describe acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis that it is punched out and is present at the crest of the interdental papillae. So the areas mostly involved during ANUG are the interdental papillae followed by marginal gingiva and the crest of the interdental papillae or the marginal gingiva are the main region covered by pseudomembrane extending into the marginal gingiva. This is the characteristic appearance and very very important this point. This describes the clinical, the clinical appearance of ANUG in the patient's mouth. The pseudomembrane slough is demarcated from the remaining part of the gingival mucosa by a term called linear erythema. Linear erythema demarcates the pseudomembrane from the normal gingival mucosa. ANUG has also got metallic taste, pasty saliva, fetid odor, malaise and fever. So these are all the clinical signs and symptoms which you will see in a patient having ANUG. The important key points to remember are attached gingiva and alveolar mucosa are rarely involved in case of acute necrotic, necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and the periodontal pockets are absent in ANUG. This is very very important that periodontal pockets are not present in ANUG as necrosis of the reason for it is a necrosis of junctional epithelium occurs during this condition. So, so now we will see the clinical condition of ANUG in this picture where I will show you the area where the ANUG, the interdental gingiva is involved in the ANUG condition. So, this you can see is the normal condition and this is the ANUG condition. So where will you look for ANUG? The areas involved are interdental papillae, which may extend to the marginal gingiva. So these are the interdental papillae where you will see the punched out or the crater like appearance.
typical punched out papillae between the mandibular canine and the lateral incisors. So this is the condition. Here also you can see this is the anak condition where you will see the punched out and crater like appearance. In more advanced case, cases, it shows the destruction of the complete papillae. So the interdental papillae will be completely gone in case of advanced condition. And typical lesions will show the spontaneous hemorrhages. So uh, spontaneous bleeding will occur in gingiva. And the generalized involvement of the papillae and the marginal gingiva with the whitish necrotic lesions. So punched out crater like uh, condition in the marginal gingiva covered by a pseudo membrane that is called anag. So there are different conditions which can be confused with anag. We will study a uh, short in short I will uh, describe all the terminologies which can be confused with a clinical condition called anag. Here I will discuss about the site involved in anag and different conditions. So begin with anag. The main region to be affected is the marginal gingiva. So anag mainly affects the marginal gingiva. In case it is advanced, it will go to the surrounding region. But in case of anag, it is affecting mainly the marginal gingiva. Then comes herpetic gingivitis. This is a condition which is diffuse in nature. So this is the point, the site is the point which it differentiates from the anag. Then comes chemical irritation. In case of any chemical irritation, the main area affected are patch-like or diffuse. It could be anywhere. So it could be patch-like or diffuse in case of chemical irritation. Similarly, in chronic gingivitis, the site involved are red or bluish red colored marginal gingiva. Marginal gingiva become red or bluish red. Whereas in anag, marginal gingiva is punched out or crater like so this is how you can differentiate according to the site the different clinical conditions with anag now i'll begin with the etiology to give you a brief of how anag happens so in case of any psychological stress and anxiety uh, there is increased production of the corticosteroids which leads to immunosuppression so as I already mentioned earlier in the introduction of ANAG that it is a condition of impaired host response. So when immunosuppression occurs, there is increase in the bacterial growth. In case of ANAG, the primary bacteria involved are the spirochetes. Spirochetes increases which may lead to necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Now the widespread decides the different phases of the ac acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. First it is called al necrotiz necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis followed by necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. If it is advanced, if it crosses the marginal gingiva and goes towards bone, it is called as necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. And if it involves the surrounding mu buccal mucosa, then it is known as necrotizing ulcerative stomatitis. And the worst condition could be known as the noma. HIV condition is also responsible for the necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. So this is the basic etiology of ANAG. Now we begin with the classification. Let's begin with the classification of ANAG given by Pindborg. Now he classified ANAG according to the site of involvement. So site is the main criteria for his classification divided into four stages. So these are the four stages according to Pindbock. Remember the classification given by whom. So stage one is when the only tip of the interdental papilla is involved. Now it is mainly affecting the marginal gingiva. But the interdental area is the place where it, the origin occurs. The tip is the place. So the tip of the interdental papilla is involved and erosion of the tip occurs that is the stage 1 classifying by Pindberg. Then comes the stage 2. As the site changes as the lesion extends from the tip of the interdental papilla towards the marginal gingiva. That is when the stage 2 begins. Then comes the stage 3. 
stage 3 is when, when the uh, disease uh, spreads from the marginal gingiva to the attached gingiva. Remember the site. So we are progressing from the tip of the interdental papillae to the marginal gingiva followed by the attached gingiva and finally the stage 4 which is the worst condition when the disease spreads to the bone. Exposure of the bone occurs. That is the stage 4 by the Pindbog classification of Allen. One classification was given by Pindbog. Now we have different uh, classification of ANAG by Horning and Cohen. These two give the classification in seven stages. Again, this involves the site or the area of progression of the clinical condition. So stage one begins with the tip of the interdental papillae. When the tip is involved, it is called as stage one. As the progression occurs, stage 2 is the condition when the necrosis of the entire papillae is involved. Remember this. From the tip, we are progressing to entire papillae. That is the stage 2 of ANAG. Then comes the stage 3. When the necrosis is happening and it is extending to the marginal gingiva. So, from the tip to the entire papillae and then it moves forward to marginal gingiva. Then comes stage 4 where the necrosis is extending to the attached gingiva also. So we are progressing. The condition is becoming worse as each uh, stage is passing. Then comes the stage 5 where the necrosis is extending to buccal or the labial mucosa. You have to remember each and every site. Stage 6 is necrosis exposing the alveolar bone. And the final stage and the last stage given by Horning and Cohen classification is the necrosis perforating the skin of the cheek. So this is also known as the Noma condition. This is the worst condition. This is how the classification is given by Horning and Cohen. So as we had seen the Hornings and Cohen's classification, they have divided the clinical condition in different names according to the stages. So this is very important part of this lecture. You have to remember how this ANAG is differented from NUG, NUG is different from NUP and NUP is different from stomatitis and stomatitis is different from NOMA also known as cankerum oris. So I will be describing a short brief of everything so that it is easy for you to remember. So stage 1 accordingly by Hor Horning and Cohen was of ANAG. ANAG is if you remember is the condition where the tip of the interdental papilla is first involved. So when it is in the entire tip of the interdental papilla, the condition is known as acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Stage 2 is the condition also known as NUG or necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Also it can be called as necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. Now the difference between ANUG and NUG or NUP is the region. Here the entire papilla, entire papilla is involved. So this is a very important difference to be noted followed by stage 3 and stage 4 also known as NUP. Here is marginal gingiva and attached gingiva is also involved. This condition known as NUP where marginal gingiva and attached gingiva is involved followed by stage 5 and stage 6 known as necrotizing stomatitis where the disease has progressed to alveolar bone. So entire alveolar bone is also involved now. And the final, the worst condition is when the disease has perforated the skin and cheeks also known as Noma. The other name for Noma is Cancrum oris. Remember this. So now we will differentiate ANUG from different clinical condition on basis of its site of involvement, then the contingency that is how communicable it is and the pseudo membranes removal or it is detached or removable. So there are different cl uh, clinical conditions which are confused with ANUG but this table is of great help if you want to remember it precisely. So let's begin with ANUG. In ANUG the site of involvement is originally only marginal gingiva. 
remember this only marginal gingiva is involved in anag whereas in the condition called primary herpetic gingiva stomatitis it is diffuse involvement and you don't know the particular area the involvement is diffuse in nature then comes desquamative gingivitis this is another gingival condition where the attachment or the gingiva affected is marginal plus attached in anag only marginal is involved we are both marginal and attached gingivas are involved in this condition in diphtheria this is another condition where marginal and rarely attached gingiva is involved so these are the four conditions which we have to differentiate according to the site of involvement particularly where the clinical uh, affected area you can see then comes the second point this was the first point according to the area or the site second is how contagious or transmissible or communicable it is now these are the three terms which are very confusing so let's begin what is transmissible what do you understand by a transmissible disease now transmissible disease is the one which maintains the infectious host or the infectious agent in it and it has the capacity for it to allow it to grow so those disease which maintains the infectious agent or host is known as the transmissible disease second is the communicable disease communicable disease is the disease that spreads by direct contact in terms of direct contact or through water or through food so this is known as the communicable disease and the third term is the contagious disease now contagious is synonym of communicable so they both are correlated so here we'll differentiate the different four clinical conditions anag primary herpetic gingival stomatitis desquamative stomatitis and diphtheria according to the communication so anag is not contagious but it is transmissible so it has the capacity to allowing the growth of the infectious agent but it does not spread by direct contact so it is not contagious but transmissible whereas primary herpetic gingival stomatitis spreads by direct contact so it is contagious desquamative gingivitis there is no much information and diphtheria is again a contagious disease so you have to remember this point also the third of our uh, point you can consider is the pseudo membrane pseudo membrane is an important feature which you can see in the anag condition also and it is removed very easily in anag anag the pseudo membrane you can easily remove whereas in diphtheria the other condition where you will see the pseudo membrane presence is very difficult to remove so this is the main criteria of difference between anag and diphtheria that pseudo membrane is easily removed in anag whereas it is very difficult to remove in diphtheria now we'll discuss some of the meritors prep facts which give you edge over other uh, participants in the exam these are the very important minute details which you have to consider so uh, the first point is about necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis which can be confused with necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis so here you have to consider the pocket formation so your necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis can be superimposed with periodontitis but it does not usually lead to pocket formation so there is no pocket formation in necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis second point to remember is the pseudo membrane formation there are 1 2 3 4 5 six clinical conditions where there is presence of pseudo membrane how will you differentiate the clinical conditions when all have the same feature that is pseudo membrane formation so as already mentioned anag you can easily remove the pseudo membranes whereas in diphtheria it is very difficult to remove and erythema multiforme the other condition has different clinical feature to differentiate it leukemic leukemic ulcers are different syphilis the uh, the membrane is undetachable in syphilis condition you cannot detach the pseudo membrane and there is candidiasis which have got different curd like appearance and which other features which you can easily differentiate so this is how all the conditions having pseudo membrane can be differentiated according to the removability then the the three points which i already shared in my previous slides 
about the transmissible disease, the communicable disease and the contagious disease. Transmissible disease has the capacity for the maintenance of the infectious agent. So they can maintain the infectious agent in the successive passages through susceptible animal host. So they have the capacity to maintain the infectious agent whereas in the communicable disease has the capacity to spread this spread by mode of direct contact. It could be water, food or airborne route, eating utensils or by arthropod factors. So it, the route can be different but they spread so they are known as communicable. They communicate from one to other. Then third is contagious. This is, is a synonym for the communicable disease. So NUG as I already mentioned is transmissible that is it has the capacity to maintain the infectious agent but it is not contagious. It does not communicate to the other by direct contact. So these are the prep facts which are very important to be considered for the exams. When we are seeing the questions for the ANUG or acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis these are again the direct questions you only have to understand the question properly and you will get the answer. So ANUG most commonly involves here they are asking the site where ANUG is most frequently occurring or it's a site of ANUG they are asking basically if you have gone through all the lecture which I have taken the answer is direct and the answer for this is marginal gingiva is the site where ANUG is most commonly seen. The second question which we are seeing which is frequently asked in the exams for ANUG is based on the classification. So here you can see the question according to the Pindborg lesion. So here they, have they are asking for the Pindborg classification. You have to remember the Pindborg classification from the lecture. The lesion extends to the area they have given the marginal gingiva. So remember all the stages as already discussed it has four stages. So we have four options. So we have to remember the site here the question is about the marginal gingiva. Remember everything stage 1 is for the tip of the papillae. Stage 2 which will be the answer for here because it is involving the margin. Stage 3 is for the attached bone and this is for the bone. So this is how you know the answer if you remember this is a direct question. The third frequently asked question from the topic of ANUG is according to the Horning and Cohen's classification. Here also they have mentioned the classification and they have asked for a condition called necrotizing stomatitis. So you have to remember the classification which I have taken already in the lecture and decide where does this necrotizing stomatitis occurs. This is again a direct question and the short short answer should be known to score in the exams. The correct answer for the necrotizing stomatitis is stage 5 and 6.